What's up everyone? Welcome to my channel and thanks so much for tuning in. Today I'm going to show you how I created my own abstract spackle art piece. If you watched my previous videos, you know that I just moved into a new apartment, so I am still looking for some critical furniture pieces and some home decor. And while on the hunt for some art pieces, I have come across this pretty popular, hyped up, minimalistic spackle plaster art technique. I've seen a lot of it on Pinterest, on Instagram, and that's actually where I got the inspiration to make one for myself. And of course, while you search certain things, your algorithm listens to you and shows you advertisements. And it actually popped up this LA-based artist that goes by Homebody LA and I got a lot of inspo from his work. I really love the size of his pieces and how he uses all neutral colors. He does use white, even like beige and even black. And I also got a lot of inspo from this female artist that goes by Cream Imperial. I believe she is based in Europe and her pieces are stunning. I really really pulled from her like textures almost like 3d pop out art because as i was doing my research i've seen a lot of people make pieces like this but when you just do small like kind of scratches or like marks that are flat you can't really see the design on camera it kind of just shows up as white unless you get like a super close-up and tweak with the lighting but with her pieces I feel like you can really really see the actual design and the pattern because she makes them really thick and that's exactly what I liked and what I definitely tried to mimic what I think she does because I of course I don't know her exact technique but I tried to mimic that and of course I'm not trying to rip her off and I don't intend on selling these. This is only for my personal use. It is pretty wild how expensive these minimalistic pieces go for. I mean ranging from like a thousand dollars and up and I totally understand why art is so expensive because it's handmade, there's a lot of time and effort that goes into it but unfortunately I just just do not have the budget for that so I'm hoping that showing you how I achieve this inspires you to make your own and even try this for yourself I will say that this probably took me way longer than the next person I've seen people just like finish this in you know 30 minutes and this took me a couple of hours this was my first time using spackle so I did want to take my time make it my own and I'm excited to walk you through the process of how I achieved this piece here are some key products that you're going to need for this project. For starters, of course, a canvas. There are so many options out there for you to choose from depending on your budget and how big you want it to be. Also, the quality. I picked this canvas up from Blick. I went with their Premier line because it was a bit better quality and not as expensive. This one was $40. Next, of course, is the spackle. I picked up this gallon jug at my local hardware store for $20, and I thought it was going to be too much, and it ended up being the perfect amount for this size canvas. I also picked up this large joint knife from the hardware store. It was only $3, which was a pretty good deal, but if you have no tools at all, you are going to need a variety of different kinds. You're going to want a mix of plastic ones of different sizes like this one and then also some better quality ones like these metal ones. So Devin actually had these three tools right here, this paint mixer and then that metal spatula and they all came in handy to create different textures and shapes. So if you do have the budget to spend a little bit more, I do recommend picking up at least one of these metal tools because I think it did make the technique that I used a bit easier. This is just coming from someone who has never worked with spackle before. You can of course use whatever is accessible and affordable for you or even find things around the house that you already have that will do the same job. I did this project in my house, so I just used these large pieces of cardboard, put them down, and got to work. 
my game plan was to just spread the spackle all over the canvas and get an even layer. So to do that, I was just using the metal spatula to distribute the spackle evenly onto the large joint knife and then just pressing it in. Honestly, it was a bit harder for me to handle the larger joint knife even though it was getting more product on, you had to use the right pressure to get it even. So I switched off between the larger one and the smaller one to smooth it all out. Now that I've used the bigger knife to smooth the spackle all over the board, I'm starting to add texture. I was trying to do both at the same time and I feel like this way is better. So what I'm doing now is I'm using this small little paint mixer and I am creating texture with this. So I'm actually adding more to some areas to make it thicker with this knife putting it on and then kind of using this as in like a tapping motion to create almost like peaks. You know when you get meringues and it has that little like, that little twirl on top? This is kind of reminding me of that. See, even like when you pick it up, you can see like little peaks, kind of like stiff peaks like when you make whipped cream, like it's not moving, it's pretty thick. So it will hopefully hold this shape but what I'm doing is I just put a little bit right here and then I'm just kind of working it in. Yeah, there's no rhyme or reason to this. I'm kind of just doing whatever texture I feel like will look good. I want this to look imperfect, but perfectly imperfect, you know? So that's what we're doing trying to do a good balance of like this type of texture and then also like some smooth areas too because I still want some smoothness but definitely this texture is important so and then this is actually a, a good method because then you can make sure that the canvas is properly covered also I'm trying to just go in all different directions. And then you kind of see how on the top it's building up. I'll just kind of take it and then move it back to the bottom. This little area in the center. It's the next day and this is how the spackle has dried. There is a lot of texture going on and there aren't really any cracks, which I'm happy about, but there are little areas where there are like air bubbles or like little gaps. So I am going to paint over this and I think that will just seal everything in. I am pretty happy with how this looks. Like you can obviously see the texture even on camera. So that is exactly what I was wanting. Um, this is actually still a little bit wet too. So I think I'm gonna have to wait another hour or so before I paint it, but I just wanted to show before I paint how it looks. I think I'm going to mix some colors. I have this sample of this kind of like off white cream color with like just regular white. I might even add a little pop of this color, just a tiny, tiny bit like to certain parts. Um, mixed with like this color or white. So I'll go ahead and show you how I do that once this is a bit more dry. I used this paint tray and was able to mix a tiny bit of that color in with this other shade of white and went straight onto the canvas with it. I started with the smoother areas and realized it was a bit more opaque than I wanted. So I did end up adding water to the paint and also sprayed it down at the end as well to dilute it. Okay, so I just finished painting and you can't really see on camera, but there are some areas that are like different shades of kind of like white cream. I did leave these thicker areas just the regular spackle color because it was difficult to get into every nook and cranny. And this specific spackle is lightweight. The texture of it dried on here kind of feels like foam. 
so it's pretty delicate still like you can see a lot of it ended up like falling off when I was painting I'm hoping that when this dries it will all come together and look really nice and you'll have a lot of dimension and I'm just hoping it will be perfect so I'll wait for this to dry hopefully in a day or two and then I'll do the reveal up on the wall and here is the finished product. I'm honestly super happy with the piece itself and how it looks. I do think that this honestly could have been bigger. I don't know if it looks weird or if it's okay for right now at least. We can leave it here. I could put this in my kitchen because I do have a really awkward breaker box in the middle of the wall. So this could definitely cover that, but not too sure if this is kitchen art. Here's a closer look of the finished piece. On camera, you can't tell as much, but in person, I think you can see the subtle color differences, and that's exactly what I was wanting. Even though I do think it could have been bigger, I really love this angle of how it looks through the mirror that's in my living room. And because it's minimalistic and neutral, it goes really well with our decor. And even if we decide to move it to a different room, it should match and bring a little touch of modern. I hope you enjoyed watching this video as much as I did making it, and if so, please leave a comment and subscribe if you aren't already for future DIYs to come. I'll catch you guys later.